Hey, I'm Steve Krenz for Guitar Gathering. Thank you for, for tuning into this lesson. Quick lesson on shape chords. Wouldn't it be great if you could just take a common shape that you already know and be able to put it in some other places and make some great music about it? Well, we already know we can do that with bar chords. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something different here. I'm talking about taking a common shape and just to start moving it around. Now there's a PDF that goes along with tonight, uh, tonight's lesson, so that link is in the YouTube description down below. Make sure you download that PDF, because all the examples and all the chord blocks I'm going to be talking about are you know, on that PDF. All right, so let's, let's talk about what I'm, what I'm getting at when I say shape chords. Now, you can do this with all kinds of shape. I just picked about two or three different common shapes that you can do this concept with. And basically, I take a shape, and I just start moving it around. So I can get a whole lot of really creative sounds with it, and I'm not learning, oh my goodness, a bazillion chords. I'm moving around one or two common shapes, and those, when combined with the open strings on a guitar, let's say I'm using an E shape, I've got all these open strings ringing, and yet if I move this same shape around, when I move the shape to a different place, but still combine it with those open strings, I can sometimes not with every chord, but sometimes lightning strikes and magic happens, okay? So it doesn't work on every place you move your hand. It doesn't work every place you move your hand, but a couple of the ones along the way are the real diamonds that you can find. So let's get into it. Take a look at that first page there. I like to call these shape chords because it's always based upon a common shape. So we're gonna take the, co the most common of all chords, a C chord. So. If you took a regular open C chord, third finger, second finger, open string, first finger. A great chord. If I do it like that, it's a C chord, everybody plays it, okay? But if I start moving this shape around, I can get some other combinations. Well, hey, that's a C, but you know, this is a really cool D suspended. And all it is is that C shape just moved up to two frets. So take a look at page one, and I, I listed uh, not all of them, but I listed about five of the ones that work with this particular shape. So you'll see like, they don't work with every place you move your hand, but they do work with a couple of them. So if I have it in its normal place at the first fret, I get a C chord. If I move my hand up to the third fret and keep the exact same shape and the exact same open strings, or even just the inside four for a D suspended. I end up with a really cool D suspended chord. It has the same notes as a D suspended like this, but it's just a different way of hitting that chord. Well, it is, this happens in several other spots along the neck. Another place that it happens that you can get a pleasant chord with is on the sixth fret. If I move the shape up to here, I get the notes that would make up an F major ninth chord. F, A, C, E, and G. A very cool way to do it. So, I've, so far I've got a C, I've got a D suspended, I've got an F major uh, ninth. If I go up two more, I get a, a G sixth. Those are the notes: the the G, the B, the the uh, 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 E in there. That's an E, uh, e a G sixth, also an E minor. If you want to think of it that way. If I, maybe if I put the low E in there, it would function as an E minor. You get make sure I'm tuned up here. Life's too short to play guitar out of tune, right? All right, so take a look at the next one. We've had done it in C, we've done it in D, we've done it in F, we found one in G. If I go up two more, I end up with kind of a an interesting sounding A7th chord. 
these are the notes that make up an A seventh. An A, a C sharp, there's an E, there's a G, there's another A there. So do you see what I'm doing? I'm just moving this shape. Now, not all of them are gonna work, but sometimes you'll you'll strike uh, gold and you'll hit it. So, so take a look at the little chord progression there at the bottom of page one. And let's just practice this before we move on into some other ones. We've got a C, and then we go to an F major ninth. G6, all I'm doing is moving the same shape up in different spots. C, then an A, D sus, G, and C. So if I put those in a little progression, one, two, three, four, C, F, G, C, A7, D sus, G6, Okay, a very interesting sounding little progression there, and all I'm doing is moving the exact same shape around. Let me play it for you one more time. Two, three, four. These are, these are little tricks that we can do on fretted instruments, like a guitar, that keyboard players can only dream about. Okay, because we can shift a similar shape and move it to different spots. That's one, one chord possibility. Hey, let's look at the next one. On page two, we have the, let's do it with another, another chord, another, this we'll use, we'll think of this as our seed chord, and that we're gonna derive all these other ones off of. And this is a regular old open E. E, second finger on the B, uh, uh, third finger on the uh, um, E, first finger on the G sharp, then open B, open E. An E major chord. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. If I shift it up a half step, I get kind of a, a very Mediterranean sort of sounding chord. Which if I counted up the notes in it and did some of the music theory of it, it ends up being an F major seventh with a flatted fifth with a low E in the bass. F major seven flatted fifth. But Steve, I have no use for an F major seven with a flatted fifth with an E in the bass. Are you sure about that? Hey, this is pretty cool. If I want that Spanish sound, that that uh, Mexican flavor to different things, hey, I put that on my classical guitar. That's where I use that chord. A very hip chord, very common chord in Spanish sounding music. And that's based off of that E shape, just moving it up. Okay? If I, uh, let's do one more. This is not even on the page. If I move this shape up two more frets to where my second finger is now at the fifth fret, that's kind of an, you know, a G sixth kind of a chord, or an E minor seventh, but look what happens when I combine it with the other ones. We kind of get that Malaganya sort of progression. go go back and watch the great Roy Clark and his version of Malaganya and he's gonna do exactly that chord you don't use it all the time but sometimes you do I tell you I've been in some situations where they're needing that kind of Spanish sound all I have to do is that ah they're convinced I'm I'm all I'm a flamenco player I, I, it's a little gag, a little trick you can play on guitar. All right, getting back to our page, page two. All right, where did we stop? We stopped at this F major seventh, flat five with an E in the bass. Hey, wait a minute. If I, let's do an F, an F with a, like a bar chord, but I'm not gonna press my bar down. I'm just gonna do kind of an F, where a normal bar would be like that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that up where I'm only fingering the t bottom four strings, the F on the sixth string, the C on the fifth string, the uh, pinky on the fourth string, the second finger, 
A on the third string. So now I've basically got the same chord I just had. I'm just putting an F in the bass. Do you see what happened there? The only thing, only difference between this and this is the F in the bass. Well, now I can move that shape around. What if I moved him up just one fret? I get a beautiful F sharp suspended. You don't think you might use that song, that, that chord? Oh, that's a great chord in the key of uh, E. Great. It's this bottom half of an F chord without the bar shifted up just to the second fret. Shape chords, shape chords. I can get this very exotic sounding chord, but I'm, I'm not playing anything complicated down here. I'm just moving it to a different spot. But the ringing strings add all this beautiful texture to it. What if I moved it up one more fret? Now I'm at the third position, and now I get this great little G6. Okay, now if I move it to the fourth, it doesn't sound too good. So not all of them work, but we found one at the open, the second, the third. What if I put it here, up here at the fifth? I end up with a beautiful A, uh, A2 sort of a chord. If I move it up to the seventh, I get a B suspended. So if I don't want to wrestle with this, then I can just, this sounds even cooler. Okay, you want to play things, here's a little secret of the pros, you want to play things on guitar that sound great and sound unique on this instrument. So if I'm on an acoustic guitar, what sounds great on this instrument is ringing strings, these, these wonderful strings that ring. So if I'm on acoustic, I try and avoid bar chords like the plague. Not because I can't play them, I can play them fine, it's just that they don't sound all that good on an acoustic guitar. What makes an acoustic guitar sound good? is the open strings ringing. So if I can get open strings ringing, that's what I want to do. So you bet I'm going to choose this for B suspended or one of the other combinations you're going to see here in a minute. What if I move this up just in one more half step? Now I'm at the eighth fret. Now I end up with a beautiful C major seventh. So instead of doing this or this, that sort of stuff, I've got this cool little version I can do up here. Now, you may be thinking, oh, but Steve, I can't do a bar chord. You're not using the bar. You're not, do you see how my hand is up? I'm not using the bar of this. So you're not barring, you're not having to do that. You're just fretting it like a regular note and then leaving the rest of it to be the open strings. If I move up two more frets, I get this beautiful D6-9 chord. So, we, not every one of them worked, but we found, you know, a good six or seven of them there. E. F major 7th with an E in the bass. If I switch that over to this shape and then start moving that up. G 6th, A 2, B suspended. Oh, didn't work at C sharp, but it did work at C. And then D. Oh, these are great. These are great, guys, because you can move these all around. Take a look at the little example in the middle of the page there on page 2. What's that example? It's moving from an A 2 to a B sus to an E then an F sharp sus, to the F major, to the E. So if I put that in a progression, it'd be like. Three, four, one, two, three. I'll do it again. Hear how the open strings really make it sound unique on guitar? That's what I'm talking about. It's doing all the right things, the things that make an acoustic sound great. Open strings, okay? I wonder if I can make that sound Spanish. Sure can. All right, so we've done it on a C shape. We've done it on an E shape, okay? What's another shape that we can do? Okay, well, there are, there are uh, I'm gonna give you two more, but you could do it on a variety of different shapes. Let's look at one more. Look at the bottom of page two. I'm, my seed chord is gonna be this really cool F sharp minor 11th. 
Okay, chords that use a lot of open strings are, are work best for thing for moving these shapes around. That's going to be my initial shape. Second finger on the F sharp, third finger on the E on the second fret of the fourth string. Pinkies on that A of the uh, third string second fret. Don't play it like this. I know it's the same, but this is a much more usable when you actually get into progressions. This is going to be the shape that's going to be more usable for you. Okay, so what happens here? If I move it up two frets to the fourth fret, I get this beautiful E2 with a G sharp in the bass. Now don't get, don't get lost with all of the, oh my goodness, it's this complicated chord with an extra thing in the bass. You know, just, just realize how they function. Realize how they function. This functions, this is, this is an F sharp minor 11th. This functions over any F sharp minor chord. So if I see an F sharp minor chord written in the, in the music, and I want to sound a little bit more colorful, I can throw this F sharp minor 11th at them. And depending on how the musical situation is, it could end up sounding really, really cool. Okay. Oh, E2 with a G sharp in the bass. Well, that works over an E. So anytime I have an E, but I want to have an extra color in there, or maybe some movement, let's say I'm maybe going to an A. What if I had an E? Well, that's pretty boring. What if I slip in that E2 with a G sharp right between those two? One, two, two. Do you hear how nice that was? It's still an E, it's just shifted the inversion of it and added that little color tone, and next thing you know, it sounds great. If I move it up to the fifth, if I move this shape now up to the fifth fret, oh, I get a beautiful A minor ninth. Now, keep in mind, I'm muting out the fifth string, okay? So just with all of these shapes, notice how there's an X over the fifth string. So I'm not fretting that fifth string. His, my second finger is kind of angled down just a little, just enough to touch that fifth string, but not to actually fret it, okay? So it's just touching it. So if I did each of these strings um, individually, it would sound like this. But when you put that into the context of things, it works. Okay, so beautiful A minor ninth functions over any A minor chord. Okay, just a little bit about understanding how chord and chord theory works. You can always simplify chords. So think of it as ornaments on the Christmas tree. Okay, this chord is an A minor tree, okay? Now, I can hang all kinds of ornaments on that tree, an A minor ninth, an A minor eleventh, an A minor thirteenth. Uh, I can add all kinds of ornaments onto this A minor tree, but it's basically an A minor. So if I want to simplify something, I can always take the ornaments away and I'm left with whatever it is. A minor, E major, F minor, whatever. In this case, it's an A minor. So over an A minor chord, if I have an A minor chord in my song and I want to sound kind of cool on an acoustic guitar, add some open string craziness, I might lay this A minor ninth on them. Okay. Or here's another one. If I go up two more, go up two more frets to the uh, seventh fret, I get a B minor eleventh. Now that sounds great because a B minor sounds pretty lousy on an acoustic guitar. I got a bar, all that sort of stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, what if I did a B minor seventh? Well, man, I'm really stuck with a bar. So sometimes if I'm on a B minor, I'll slip up to this guy just to get some open strings ringing. If I go two up, two more frets. I get an end up with a C sharp minor seventh. So instead of wrestling with this, which is not going to sound particularly good on an acoustic guitar anyway, I can do this C sharp minor seventh there. So it, we, in this shape, we have done, we found about four or five chords F sharp minor eleventh. If I go up to the fourth fret, I get an E2 with a G sharp, functions over any E chord. A really hip A minor ninth functions over any A minor chord. Two more frets, I got a B minor 11th, works over any B minor. C sharp minor 7th. Okay, and the, the rest of them don't sound too good. But, don't sound too good. But we did find a few of them in there that work. So not every one of these is gonna work, but some of them are gonna be really magic. And so that's what, that's what I want you to tune into. Hey, flip the page. Let's look at a couple more of these and then we'll get you out of here. So take a look at the next page. We've got, we're gonna do a new shape. 
a power chord shape, okay? So if I have a, an E power chord up here at the, uh, the seventh fret, well, what am I doing here? I got my first finger on the fifth string at the seventh fret on this E here, okay? I'm gonna put uh, my, my uh, second finger, or excuse me, a third finger on the B, which is the fourth string at the, what is that, the ninth fret? And then I have my pinky on the third string at the ninth fret. And it's just those three, I'm, those three, I'm not barring, I'm just leaving it up, and I'm gonna go, everybody's on their tippy toes, and I'm gonna let all these other strings ring. And let's just not play the low E for the time being. We're just gonna do from the fifth string down to the first. Okay. This is an E5. Okay, so there's no third in it. A beautiful chord in its own right. Okay, a great chord in its own right, but when I start moving it around, I can get some other chords. So let's say I move it down. You know, just keep moving it down. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If I go here to the first fret, I end up with this ugly sounding chord, but if I go one more, I'm left with, what? what is that? That's an A2. So do you see how an A2 is the same um, chord family as this E? I'm using five strings with just these, the fourth and third string being pressed down. So that A2, I kind of snuck that in there in the family as well. So if I shift up to the second fret, I've got a B sus. So now I've got two B susses. I've got that B sus, I've got this B sus. If I move it up to the third fret, I get a C major seventh. Very pretty sounding chord. If I move it up to the fourth fret, I get a C sharp minor seventh. Fifth fret, I got a D six nine. already did E. So what else? Uh, there's a G up here. I could put up here a G. And that sounds okay. It makes a progression that all sounds connected because you've got common tones ringing through with this high B and the high E. That's a little secret to making a chord progression sound connected. If I did, if the chord progression written down was just an E, a D, a C, I would play this if I wasn't thinking, which none of those are connected. So I'm just kind of jumping. You see how the sound, the overall tonality is kind of jumping from here and there. But once I play them in this version, it all sounds connected together. That's a little secret, kids. Learn that. Open strings, connecting chords, common tones between chords will make your chord progression sound connected. Okay. Take a look at the little sample chord progression down here at uh, uh, on uh, number one, example number one on page three. What do we have there? We have an E5, a C sharp minor seven, C major seven, then back up to a D, six, nine, and to an E. Do it again. Beautiful. Okay. What if I did a let's let's combine these chords with some other uh, of these moving chords that we've already talked about. So take a look at example number two down there, bottom of page three. Almost done. Only two more examples to go. 
Now I'm going to kind of kind of mix and match a whole bunch of these and see if we can make a create a great sounding progression. Look what I have here. I have an A minor to a G to an F. But when I add these other ornaments, these other chord tones in it, these other voicings of it on guitar, it takes what would sound like this, makes it sound something like this. Such beautiful exotic sounds. Oh my goodness, there it's it's too complicated, it's too rich, it's too beautiful sounding. It's the same shape. Okay? It's a similar shape. Okay, I'm not just mixing these two, and I'm using the be what makes an acoustic guitar beautiful, the open strings. Take a look at the last example, page four. I kind of just it's just a soup of everything that we covered. I have an A2, I have a B sus, I have an E2 with a G sharp in the bass to lead back up to that A2. I have an F sharp minor 11th, a B suspended, then an E. I slip in a little B minor 11th, which is the two coming up on the, uh, the A. Oh, listen to this. That's that F sharp 7th sus. A, B, and E. So if I played it all together, two, three, Play it again. Back on the top. A, B, B2. There you go. Shape chords. Chords that you could move around by shape. These aren't the only ones. Find some of your own. Take If you have a good open chord that you like, uh, voicing that you like, start moving it around on the neck. See if you can find a few uh, chords that are unique to you and sound great. There's all kinds of them. Hey, I'm Steve Krentz for Guitar Gathering. If you like the content that we're putting out, um, take a second to subscribe. This is actually, this lesson is actually part of a larger series that I did called The Money Chords, the chords that really sound great on guitar. So if you're interested in checking out the, the larger course for this, The Money Chords series, the link for that is in the uh, YouTube description down below. Hey, I'm Steve Krenz, coming at you live from Nashville, Tennessee. We'll see you guys next time.